February is over and it is time for a wrap up and if you watched my January wrap up video you will have seen that I said I wanted to slow down my reading in February to take a little bit of time for other media and I ended up reading nine books. <laughs> So uh, I'm a liar. I'm a dirty, dirty liar. Most of these came from the library, so I have nothing to hold in my hand, which means that I will be flailing my arms around a lot in this video because that's what happens when I have nothing to hold. February was Black History Month and I tried to focus my reading mostly on black authors, not all of them, but most of them were written by black authors and I got most of these from the library because I looked at my 2018 TBR and there was maybe like one black author on there and that that's a fail. That's a big fail on my part. Uh, but I'm in the middle of a book ban for this year trying to save money. <laughs> Um, so I couldn't go out and buy these books, but luckily I have the library and a lot of these books I think I might end up buying copies of someday anyway Maybe as like a birthday or Christmas treat to myself because I do want to support them And I really liked a lot of these books a lot So let's get into it. The first book I read in February was Lair of Dreams by Libba Bray And this one I started in the end of January and finished it in February And this is the second book in the Diviner series and it was really good. I really liked it. I liked how it continued on with the series. I liked how it shifted perspective a little bit to different characters. Uh, I liked the social commentary it made. So it's set in the 1920s and it's this paranormal sort of mystery um, that has a large cast of diverse characters. And it's, this is a really fun series, a little bit spooky, but a lot of fun. I rated this one four stars. I liked it about as much as the first one. I think it lags a little bit in the middle um, and I definitely saw some of the twists coming but it's like I still uh, I, it, it didn't bother me as much that I sort of predicted these twists because I cared so much about these characters. I meant to mention this when I read the first book in the series last month but they this series reminds me of a lot of other things one of which is Devil in the White City which is a non-fiction book um, also Ghostbusters it reminds me a bit of Ghostbusters and it might be because it's set in New York and there's like demons and ghosties and stuff. Uh, and it also reminds me of a funny girl <laughs> starring Barbara Streisand because uh, the Ziegfeld Follies plays a part in it and showgirls and it just like all these things come together. It's a very odd combination but it works. It works really well. And I put the third book in the series on hold at the library, so I'm waiting for that. The second book I read in February was The Wedding Date by Jasmine Gullery. Gullery? Gallery? Hmm. And this is a adult romance that I listened to on audiobook, and I don't usually go for adult romance books, uh, but it was blurbed by Roxane Gay, and I trust her opinion. And it ended up being a really superb book because it's a romance book, that's like fluffy but it's not vapid like a lot of times you read romance and you're like this is just stupid but I like it anyway this wasn't stupid it was actually really intelligent and it had things to say outside of the romance it is about a woman who gets stuck in an elevator with a dude who's going to a wedding at this hotel that uh, they're in, stuck in this elevator, and he needs a date to this wedding so she decides to go with him as like his fake date and their fake date turns into a real relationship. Well, it's pretty cute. Uh, but the reason why I say it's intelligent and like not vapid is because uh, the guy is white and the woman is black. So it also talks about uh, race relations. It, it's a romance book that talks about race relations and approaches it in such an intelligent, interesting way that I really enjoyed that aspect of it. So if you're looking for an adult romance with a touch of like social commentary, um, check that out. Uh, but again, it is an adult romance. Uh, so if you're a young person, it may not be quite uh, appropriate for you. So I'll just throw that out there. The third book I read was Dear Martin by Nick Stone. And this one you may have heard of. It's getting kind of a, a bit of hype lately and it is well-deserved hype. I give this five out of five stars. I think on my Goodreads review, I just wrote, uh, just read it because it is amazing. So this is about a teenage black boy who gets arrested in the beginning of the book, like the first chapter, gets arrested 
basically because he is black. The rest of the book deals with him like coping with this incident and trying to work through uh, being a black teenager in America right now. He works through this by writing hypothetical letters in a journal to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and it is a very powerful book. The main character, Justice, is uh, like a sweet little angel boy that you just want to hug so much and protect from the world, but you can't because it's the world and it has so much to say and it is only 210 pages about, uh, but it packs so much into those pages. Not a word is wasted in this book. It is written superbly well. I really recommend it. It is so important read it. The fourth book I read was Difficult Women by Roxane Gay, and this is a collection of her short stories, and they all have to deal with women. <laughs> Hence the title. I will say this book is excellent, but brutal. Like, if you are sensitive to depictions of assault or rape or violence, um, really be careful going into this book because a lot of the stories deal heavily with that. One negative thing that I'll say about it is that I know that these stories were published elsewhere before they were collected. They weren't written for a collection, so some of the stories felt like they didn't really belong in the collection, so I ended up giving it four out of five stars. But I really like Roxane Gay. I think I might like her nonfiction better than her fiction a little bit. Uh, but that's just a personal preference. Um, and also, I do have a hard time with short story collections because I feel like, I don't know, I just don't like the pacing most of the time. I think that Roxane Gay is amazing. And through these stories, you can really feel, or I felt like you could feel her like working through her anger and her frustrations at the world and the things that have happened to her and the things that happened to other people. And you can like sort of feel it come through these stories, like these stories are written to be cathartic for her and they could also be cathartic for a reader. Again, a trigger warning for some really difficult topics and depictions in these in these stories, but otherwise, four out of five stars, uh, if that is something that you can handle, then I definitely suggest it. The fourth book I read, uh, not by a black author, but just because it came up at my hold at the library and I wanted to read it before the movie comes out, but that is uh, Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, that's a long title, by Becky Albertalli. And this is a young adult contemporary novel about a young boy kind of coming out. Um, his, his coming out story is what it is. Our main character is writing anonymous like pen pal emails to another gay boy that he knows goes to his school, but he doesn't know who he is. They sort of like meet online and just know each other's emails and like screen names. Um, and someone finds out about these emails and blackmails him and that sucks, <laughs> but it is uh, a really cute story overall. The blackmail part, it's a little squicky, um, but you know, it's supposed to be. You know, that's just one part of the story. Most of the story is about Simon coming to terms with his sexuality and like coming out as a teenager. And it's a great fun book. I really liked it. Four out of five stars and I'm really excited to go see the movie. I've seen some um, advanced uh, positive things about it and I'm really excited. The sixth book that I read was not for Black History Month but it came up on my holds on Overdrive. That's the app I use to listen to audiobooks that you check out from the library. It's awesome. If you don't have Overdrive and you have access to it, definitely use it. It's great. Again, this book became available for my holds. You know, I just put a bunch of holds on stuff and when they become available, I listen to them. And this was Midnight at the Bright Ideas Bookstore by Matthew J. Sullivan. This was a mystery and I found it a little bit unsatisfying. I ended up giving it three out of five stars because a lot of the interesting threads that are set up at the beginning of the book don't really go to any satisfying conclusions. Like everything is concluded and you know exactly what happens by the end of the book, but it's like, the stuff that was set up in the mystery is more interesting than the actual reveal. Um, and this is about a young woman who works in a bookstore and a really bad thing happens in that bookstore and the rest of the novel is her trying to work out like why this happened. There's a lot of like bookish elements set up in the on the front end of the mystery, but then they never really end up going anywhere. So it was just like, eh. 
three stars. The seventh book I read was The Bells by Daniel Clayton, and I gave this four out of five stars, and this book was really enjoyable. It came out this month, a lot of people are talking about it, and after reading it, I would say that it is worth the hype. I mean, it wasn't like the best book I've ever read, but it was a really enjoyable book. The only thing I didn't like about it is that it gets too descriptive, and I have a problem with lots of description <laughs> in books. It's like, mm. But anyway, this is about a fantasy world that is sort of set on New Orleans culture, which is really interesting concept. So it's like a whole fantasy world with like New Orleans cultural elements in it and it's really cool but anyway in this world all humans are born gray with like red eyes and horrible hair <laughs> um, except for the bells and the bells are beautiful and they have the power to transform people's physical appearance and their demeanor and in each generation of these bells one is chosen to be the favorite of the queen and works for the royalty in the palace but not everything is as it seems on the surface just like beauty what's underneath is not necessarily what's on top you know it's really deep Lots of messages here, you guys. This is a really fun book, and again, the only problem I had with it is that it gets, like, a little over-descriptive. Like, you don't have to tell me what everything looks like when we're already, like, three-quarters of the way through the book. Like, set up the world that I know. Everything is pretty. Everything is pretty and embellished in this world. Unless it is really important for you to tell me what color something is, don't bother. Just get on with the plot. But anyway, when I picked this up from the library, I didn't realize that this is the beginning of a series. I thought it was a standalone, and now I have to wait. I have to wait. Who knows how long I have to wait for the next book? I don't know. <sighs> but I liked it well enough to continue on with the series, and I think I will be purchasing this book for myself because I want to continue on with the series, and I would like to eventually have the whole set. The seventh book that I read in February was Bingo Love by T. Franklin. I did a whole five reasons why review on this one, so I'm not going to tell you much about it here because you can go and watch my other video, uh, but I really love this. It is a graphic novel about a lesbian relationship between two black women. It's amazing. I broke my book buying ban to go buy this from my comic book shop because I saw it on their Instagram and I had to have it, and these are the kind of books that I love to support. So yes, it's amazing. Five out of five stars. It's lovely, cute, wonderful, really good. Please go check it out. And the ninth and final book that I read in February, it was another five-star read for me, and that was The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Now, everybody and their neighbor on BookTube has talked about this book, hyped it up. It came out um, 2016, I think it came out last year. Uh, oh no, 2017, today. It's now 2018. Last year was 2017. This book came out in 2017, and it is absolutely worth every bit of hype that it has been getting. This book is phenomenal. Our main character is Star. She is uh, 16 or 17 years old, and she has grown up in a poor black neighborhood, and she goes to a predominantly white private school. And she, in the beginning of the book, witnesses the fatal shooting of one of her childhood friends by a police officer. And the rest of the book is her dealing with that, um, the media storm surrounding it, uh, the court case, or um, however you say that, the court proceedings, her relationships with her friends growing up, her relationships with her family. It's like, it's just superb and timely and powerful and extremely well written. It moves at a really nice pace. All the characters are completely fleshed out and you believe that they're real people and it, it tackles these issues head on and it does it in such an unflinching way. <laughs> It's a hard subject to deal with, but this is not a hard book to read, I don't think, because the characters are so well presented. Star is an amazing person. You really feel for her. You love her family and her friends. You, like, feel her rage at everything, and mm, it's just, oh, God, I cannot say enough good things about this book. It is so powerful. 
I'm really glad that I read it and it's just I will be thinking about this book for a long long time probably forever I think this book should be taught in schools I think that uh, it should be read everywhere and discussed a lot five stars please go pick up this book if you have not yet it is absolutely worth all the hype it's amazing read it. I also watched a few things this month that I would like to talk about and the first one was Black Panther which is the best Marvel movie to date. I said it, it is. Not only is this just like a phenomenal movie but it has really rekindled my love for Marvel movies that has been lagging a little bit lately. I really liked Thor Ragnarok because I love Thor. But I, I really did not like Civil War, and the second Guardians of the Galaxy was just okay. And I've been really frustrated with every Marvel movie that has come out, except for Black Panther, that is not Captain Marvel. Because they kept pushing Captain Marvel, and she's my fave, and I want her movie now. And it's like, if not Captain Marvel, then Black Panther is excellent. So, yes. Oh my god. It was the best. It's so good. It is so good. I have I don't have a, like a single criticism to say about this movie. And it also is one of the best standalone ones, I think, of the Marvel movies. So if you have not seen all of the other Marvel movies or if you're not caught up with the whole MCU, uh, you can go into this one and I don't think there is too much that you won't understand. Like they make references to the other movies, but this one is very self-contained and I think more self-contained than a lot of the other movies that have been coming out lately. Everyone in that movie has been casted perfectly. The costumes are amazing. The story is wonderful. The action is worth it. Like it's not just mindless action for the sake of action. Like it actually means something. Uh, the, the sets are phenomenal. The music is better than most Marvel movies. It, it's just like, oh my god. <sighs> the main character is supported by, like, so many women. Like, all of the women, they save the freaking day. And if I can't get a female-led superhero movie yet from Marvel, then this is certainly the next best thing for my, you know, female-led fix. And oh my god, just please, just go watch it. Just go watch this movie. It's so good. It's so good. It's so perfect. Oh, I gotta watch it again. Another thing that I watched this month um, was finally the BBC version of Pride and Prejudice. It was on Hulu and I'm like, well, I just, I, you know, I just want to sit down and watch something. So I watched the BBC miniseries of Pride and Prejudice, finally. I don't know when it came out, years ago. Uh, but I loved it. It was so good. You know, a lot of people compare it to the Kira Knightley movie and that's sort of like, you know, you either like one or the other, but I really like both. And after I watched the miniseries, I also watched the Kira Knightley movie and I love both. Uh, the BBC version is obviously a lot longer because it's a miniseries, so they pack a lot more in. Um, they're a lot like closer to the book where the Kira Knightley movie is a lot more of like the plot highlights. Um, but the Kira Knightley movie, oh man, it's just so pretty. Like, every shot in that movie is so pretty and, like, so thoughtful and purposeful. It's wonderful. And it really made me want to reread Pride and Prejudice again because I, it's been a long time since I read it and it sort of rekindled something like, oh, you need to read some Jane Austen soon. A lot of people look at Pride and Prejudice as just, like, a love story. And, like, it certainly is. It certainly is a wonderful love story. But it's also, like, social commentary. And, oh, this, this better she's got to get her daughters married off because they're going to be destitute and no one takes her seriously. And, oh, God, and all the thousand-mile stares. And the costumes and the balls. You know, the social anxiety, the social constructs they have to deal with. I love it so much. So good. <laughs> That's all I have for the month of February, believe it or not. Oh, except for um, Janelle Monet dropped some new music. Go listen to it right now. It's so good. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that's everything that I read and watched in February. I hope that you had a really good month. Um, let me know anything you want me to know down in the comments. Uh, I upload a video every Wednesday and sometimes a sporadic bonus video. So stay tuned for that. And thank you so much for watching. <laughs>